What's going on guys? I'm back again to add on to our weight logger application. In this video, what we're going to do is create a, a custom prototype cell uh, that's going to contain a thumbnail image so the user can see what photos are in core data that are tied to the particular weight entry that they have um, and they don't have to necessarily open the full size image. Uh, we still have the functionality for them to click the photo or click the cell and open the full screen image. Uh, but we want the user to just have access and see a small thumbnail image without having to go to that full screen image. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to store along with the full screen image a uh, thumbnail URL in the documents directory or, or not in the documents directory, in the core data we're going to store a thumbnail URL. Uh, so we're actually saving both a full size image and a thumbnail image in the documents directory. Alright, so here's just the application on the left. Uh, we'll click log your weight. It's the same application as before. Uh, if we go to the log, okay, we have nothing in there right now. If we enter in just some weight, add a photo, so we'll just click this mountain, save it. So we have a small thumbnail image, as you can see here, uh, the weight and the date. So now we can see what photo it is. If we click on it, we also get the full screen image. Um, but this is what we're going to be doing is adding or actually modifying and creating this custom cell here um, and then modifying our core data model. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is modify our core data model. So that's what I have open here on the right. Uh, we're going to add another attribute, and I'm going to call it photo thumb URL. Uh, I did. I named this one full uh, in, t in anticipation that we're going to have a thumbnail image. Uh, so this is going to be of type string. So we have photo full and photo thumb. Uh, then we can go to our user weights class, and we can create an entry here. So at ns managed variable and then we can call this photo thumb URL and this is of type string. Alright, so save that. So now we've updated our core data models. Um, uh, let me actually just close out of this on the simulator and completely uninstall it. Since we modified our core data model, we want to make sure that we completely remove this from our simulator here. Alright, so now we're on the application here and now we can go and make our prototype cell inside the storyboard. Alright, so open up the storyboard and go to your weight log table view controller. I will open up this right side panel. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is actually make this cell a little larger. So you can click on the cell, you can come over here to the size inspector, and we can change this to custom or you can just click on this little square and drag it down. Uh, I'm going to drag it down to say 75 and you can see it changes right up here. Now before we continue what I'm going to do is go into the, the weight log table view controller and I'm going to implement one more method in here, a uh, delegate method, which is called uh, should be height for row at index path right here. So we're going to set up the height inside the table view controller as well. So we go back here and we'll implement this method here. So we'll type override, paste that function, make it a function, there you go. And now we're going to set the value to the same that we just put inside uh, storyboard. So we set it up for 75. Okay. So now let's go back to the storyboard. We have the height, the cell height to 75. So every cell in here is going to be of height 75. Uh, the first thing we want to do is actually create a UI image view. So we can grab one image view from here and put it up here into our prototype cell. And then the next thing we want to do is size this. Okay, so we don't want it to be this whole full screen. So we can come up here and click uh, to the size inspector and we can set the x-axis to say uh, 15. So we'll just click here. 15 and then for the y-axis will be 5. Uh, the width and the height I'm going to just create a square so 65 by 65. Okay so now we have this thing positioned right in the middle of the table view cell um, with a height of 65 65. This is for our cell here or our thumbnail. Now the next thing we need is a label. Okay so we come down here and type label drag up two labels to here so we need one there and one here. So this one is going to be for the weight and this one is going to be for the date. Okay, so now we can set the heights for both of these and the positions. So for the weight, we'll set this as at an x axis of 92 and y axis of 8, which is fine. Uh, the width, we can just drag it here all the way to the edge, which makes it 220. We'll do the same thing for the date, so 220. Um, and the weight, we can make the height uh, 25, so it's a little larger. Okay, now, now we can change the, the, the date, so we'll make that on the x-axis exactly the same, so 92, uh, but in this case we'll make it say 45, 
all right? And then the width is gonna be the same, the height can be the same. Okay, now let's actually click back on the weight, go into, this is the attributes inspector, and we'll just change the font on this one a little bit so it's a little, uh, it stands out a little more. So we can click on font here, we'll change it from system to custom, and then we'll change it to oh, just a bold style. We'll leave the font the same, and then we'll just increase the size of it to say 20, we'll just say 20. All right, so now we have both of those set up. Now before we continue, we're gonna set up what's known as a tag, and that's how we're gonna reference these inside of our view controller. Okay, so click on the UI image view, and then if you come over here to the right side inside the attributes inspector, you see this value called tag. So we're gonna set this to a unique tag. We're gonna say 100, okay? So that's the tag for this, for the UI image view. We're gonna to go to weight, we're gonna go down the tag on this one, and we're gonna set this one to 101. Again, this is how we're gonna reference these inside of our view controller. Click on the date, and we're gonna set this one to 102. Okay, so we have the date, uh, the weight, and the image view all set up in our prototype cell, and all of the tags are set up. So that's all that we have to do on storyboard. So let's go back to our weight log table view controller, and let's implement uh, these methods. So one thing that we have to change is this method here, the self row at index path. Uh, the way we reference this is not correct, actually. And actually, this reminds me, let, let's go back to the main now storyboard we have to create a reuse identifier for this prototype cell. So click over here on table view cell, scroll up to the top on the attributes inspector, and we have to create a reuse identifier. Okay, so we'll just say this is a weight log item or weight log cell or whatever you want. Okay, so now we have a reuse identifier for this particular cell here. Okay, so now we can come over here to weight log table view controller. And now we have to completely replace this line here okay so we can just get rid of all of this so we the way that we're going to get the cell is going to be by a dq function so we can say table view dot dq reusable cell uh, with identifier okay now before we write that let's create a, a constant up here reuse identifier and this is going to be the same thing that you wrote for your reuse identifier on the table view cell. So we wrote weight log item, okay? So that's our reuse identifier, and we're gonna put that inside here, okay? So that's how we reference the cell, and then also cast it as a UI table view cell, all right? So we have this weight log item, and then this is how we get that particular prototype cell. Okay, one thing again now before we continue, we also reference this down in commit editing style so we want to change this as well uh, to exactly the same code we have here. So we can copy and paste both of these lines, come down here to commit editing style and just replace this one line here with both of those. Okay, so we can minimize this one again. All right, now we come back to here and now we have to modify the way that we fill the information into the table view. Uh, before we just simply said the text label and the detail label of the particular cell but now we no longer do that. We, we have it modified the tag numbers. Okay, so we can leave these commented out for now. So we'll just comment both of those and we'll, we'll do a new implementation. So now in order to get the, the, the weight label and the date label in the image view, we're gonna reference it by the tag. So we can create a constant weight label and this is gonna be of type UI label. Okay, and this is gonna be cell.view with tag. Now the tag for the weight was 101, okay? And then we cast this back as a UI label, okay? So now we have a reference to that weight label. Now we can simply say weight label dot text equals this weight. Actually, it's gonna be equal to what we have here. So this weight dot weight plus the open print or quotations plus this weight dot units. So that's the reason why we commented those out. So we can just copy and paste that. So now we've set up uh, the label for this particular weight label.txt, okay? So now, just like that, we do the same thing for the date label. So date, we'll say detail label. And this is gonna be, again, a UI label. This equals cell.view with tag. The tag for that was 102, okay? So now we can say date.detail label or date 
detail label dot text equals this weight dot date. The same code that we have up here, um, but we're just referencing the labels differently. So now I'm going to remove both of these since we have that now. Okay, so we have the weight label, we have the date label. Uh, don't forget to cast this as a UI label. There we go. So now the next thing is just for the image view, the thumbnail image. So as we've done before, let's get the, the, uh, the, the we'll use the cell.viewWith tag and get the reference to that on the storyboard. So we can create one thumbnail photo. And in this case, it's going to be a UI image view. Okay. This equals cell.viewWith tag. And in this case, it was 100. Cast this as a UI image view. Okay, so now we have a reference to that. Now, the same as we've done before, we simply compare the value of, of the URL um, to the no photo URL. And then if it is the no photo URL, then we set that image. Otherwise, we go to the documents directory path and set the, th the thumbnail photo to that. Okay. So at this point, we're assuming okay that the that the thumbnail photo is is already saved in the documents directory. We haven't implemented it yet, but we're just going to assume from this point that it is already done. Okay, we'll do that code next. So what we do here, just as we've done before, or at least in the last video, we can say let no photo string equals ns url, and this is going to be. Uh, file URL with path and the path here is going to be for the no photo PNG okay and then we again say dot absolute uh, let me see here this dot absolute string and then explicitly unwrap that okay so now we have the path to that no photo uh, the local no photo image and now we can compare if so results is the array that holds all of the core data objects at the index path, so whatever cell they selected, that row. So this gives us the particular item. If results.indexpath.row, and actually we can just say, we don't even have to do that. We can say this weight dot photo full URL. If as long as this photo full URL is not equivalent to no photo PNG or no photo uh, STR then we can set the image otherwise we set it to the no photo URL so then thumbnail photo dot image equals UI image named and then the, the photo name which is actually we can just do no photo PNG Okay, that's that global variable that we created. So in this case, if, if we do have, uh, if the photo URL is not the same, then we're actually setting the image. So we have to go to the documents directory, uh, extract the image, and then set it. So I'm actually going to go back to um, our full screen controller here, and it's going to be almost exactly the same code here. So we'll just copy and paste this just for sake of time. Okay, so now we can come here, paste that, um, and then just remove this here. Okay, so first this gives us the path to the documents directory. Then we create the path, uh, or the path we, we append, we create the full path, including for the image. So we have to change this out here. So this is actually going to be um, this weight dot uh, photo full URL. So that's the full path to the Actually, we don't want the full URL, we want the thumbnail. So photo thumb URL. And then to actually get the image, we say thumbnail photo dot image equals UI image contents of file and for this path. So the only thing that we had to modify was for the thumbnail dot image and then the path which appends the photo the photo URL, which is this weight dot photo thumb URL. So that gets us the thumbnail image. Okay? and then we set the thumbnail image here. All right, so now we have the thumbnail photos being set. Uh, now we can handle the code for deletion uh, before we move away from this, uh, the weight logger table view controller. Um, so again, just assume that these photos are being stored and then we'll implement that code after. 
So now we can come up to the button clear log, and this should be this should be actually very simple. We only have to add a few lines. So on the clear log, we come down here and we delete uh, the full size image from the documents directory. Now we also have to delete um, the thumbnail image. So we can actually just copy this file manager, copy that line, paste it to the the line below it. Okay. So now file manage, manager dot remove item at path. Now the path that we want to append is not wait entry dot photo full URL. It's simply photo thumb URL. And that's all we have to do. So then all the other code in here is, stays the same. The only thing is we've removed the full screen image um, and the thumbnail image. Okay. And now we can again we can copy this line again. And now we can come down to the last. Um, method down here, commit editing style, and this is when the user uh, selects on the cell and chooses just to delete the one cell. So right here, we've deleted just um, the results.index path, which is the actual object dot photo full URL. So in here, we can do the same thing. So in this case, I'm going to copy this one, control C, control V. All right, so file manager, remove this file. Um, the only thing that we have to modify is this right here. So photo thumb URL, okay? So this removes the full screen image and this removes uh, the thumbnail image. These are both from the documents directory, okay? Since the paths are the same, the only thing that we're gonna be doing is saving, um, we're gonna be, sa actually, I should have mentioned this earlier, uh, we're gonna be saving the full screen image and the thumbnail image both in the documents directory. The only thing that's gonna differ is the name of the file. One's going to have underscore thumb dot png and the other one will just be the current date. Okay, so they're both in the same directory which is why we can simply just um, use the same code here. Go to the documents directory and then all you have to do is, is delete uh, the extra extension. That's it. Okay, so that's all the code that we have to do to delete. Now let's go back to our enter your weight view controller and actually implement the code to store it into core data and documents directory. Okay, so come over here to your enter your weight view controller. Um, and now we can come down to the UI image picker controller here, the did finish picking media with info. Um, so we have here saving the full screen image via the PNG data. Now the only thing that we have to do is actually save a thumbnail image. Okay, so it's going to be almost the same code, um, but we're going to be having a thumbnail image. Okay, so let's first create the thumbnail image from the original image. Okay, so we're actually going to create a thumbnail image using the function that we have here, scaled image with image. So we're creating two photos. We scaled down the image once here for our full size image. Then we're going to scale down again uh, this new image down one more time just for our, uh, for our thumbnail image, just to reduce the size. So we can create thumbnail. This is going to be a UI image. And now we can say image with image or scaled image scaled image with image now the image that we're going to pass in is new image so they're already the resized one and then we're going to make a new size CG size and then we'll create it um, we created it the our size to be 65 by 65 but I'm just gonna make it just a little bit bigger I'll say 100 by 100 okay and what I'm referencing to is the square that we made on our storyboard. It was only 65 by 65, um, but here I'm going to make it 100 by 100 pixels. Okay, so there's our thumbnail image using this method down here. So we've created an, a new thumbnail image, and now what we have to do is set the URL for that and get the data. So we can actually just copy both of these from here. Actually, we'll just rewrite it. So let's save the thumbnail image. Okay, so we can say let path for the thumbnail image, which is an ns string, equals the documents directory dot string by appending string, and then the string to append is going to be self dot photo. Okay, before we do that, <laughs> let's create just like we have here the photo full URL. We have to go to the top here create another variable for to hold our um, the thumbnail image so photo thumb URL is going to be a type string 
So now we can come back down here to the bottom. So the path for the thumbnail is going to be uh, the documents directory dot string by pending string, and then it's going to be whatever in um, photo thumb URL. Now this we haven't actually put anything in there yet, so let's do that. So let's create self dot photo thumb URL equals ns string, and now we're going to create the the file name. Okay, and this is going to be with format. So the format that I'm going to use here is going to be uh, slash the same thing that we did before, which is the date, but now what I'm going to do is append underscore thumb dot png. Okay, so the only difference is this underscore thumb part, as you can see up here. This is just slash the date and then dot png. Okay, so now the arguments here is just going to be the same as above the date. Okay, so that's what gets saved there. Uh, let me just make sure this is lowercase t. Okay, so now we have the path to the thumbnail image, which we created here. And it's the same as we did up here with the full screen image. Um, slash just the date. Now slash the date underscore the thumb, which is for the thumbnail image. Okay, so now let's go down here and do the same thing that we did before. So we can say let, we have path to the thumb, so we can create the PNG thumb data, which is going to be of type NS data equals UI image PNG representation of the thumbnail image. Okay, then we can say PNG thumb data dot write to file. The path is going to be path thumb atomically true. All right, so now that writes the, the actual thumbnail image to uh, the documents directory. So we've saved it in there. Uh, we've rescaled the image here. Uh, we redid a new path to that photo, and then we saved that uh, at that particular path into the documents directory. All right, so that's saved in there. So now we're done with this method. The only thing that we have to do is modify when the user actually saves the image, which happens when they click uh, in this method here, button save pressed. So the only thing that we have to do is actually uh, modify two, these two lines here. So whenever we save uh, the URLs, into core data. So we can say new weight dot photo thumb URL equals URL. And in this case, the URL is the URL to this no photo dot PNG. This is when the user didn't select a photo. We just append the same path to this photo here so that the thumbnail image is this image and the full screen image is that no photo image. Otherwise, we say new weight dot photo thumb URL equals self dot photo thumb URL. And that sets the, the URL that we created down here or in the did finish picking media with info to the one in core data. And then we can save that. Okay, so we've saved the image to the full screen and the thumbnail image both to core data and the documents directory. Uh, we've handled the code for deleting everything. Uh, so now we should just be able to, to test it out. So let's actually Make sure everything's saved, okay, and now let's build it. Bring it up here. Okay, so here's the screen. We'll enter in a weight, say 200. We'll do no photo, save our weight. Now we have it in here, the photo uh, preview and the weight. Let's go back and add a photo thumbnail. We'll say these one right here. Enter a weight of 12, sure. Save it, we have the preview, so that's working fine. Uh, let's click this. Okay, we get the full screen image, but if you notice there, uh, we had two segs occur, and this is what I mentioned in the previous video if you uh, watched that one. Uh, we have two segs firing, and the reason for that um, I know already is if we go to the weight log table view controller, uh, we forced the seg to happen right here, did select road index path. Uh, so we've, we, we set up the seg inside storyboard from this cell, we clicked here and dragged it to here, and then we also forced it inside here. So what we can do is comment this out. Um, just so we have the code, or we can just delete this whole method here. I'll just comment the whole, all of it out. Um, save that. Let me just rerun this code just to make sure that it was the problem. Okay, so now it's back up. We go here, go to the log. Okay, everything's being saved, so it is persistent. We click this. Okay, so now we don't have two segs firing. Um, so now we have just the full image. We can go back, click this one, we have this one, and everything's working fine here. So the app is actually complete, um, but there's one thing that I want to do to increase performance. If you run this on your phone, I'm sure it'll work fine because we're scaling the image down. 
just for the sake of best practices, um, which what we should always do when we implement a UI image picker controller is actually um, push everything to the background thread and only push uh, only do things for the UI on the main thread. Okay, inside the delegate function. Okay, so I'll, I'll, you'll see what I'm talking about inside here. So if we come to the enter your wave view controller and come down to the did finish picking media with info. Um, we do all of this scaling of the image and setting the thumbnails all on the UI's main thread. And this is actually going to tie up a lot of memory. So what we really should do is push everything to a background thread and then only, only bring forth to the main thread to set the thumbnail image and then dis dispatch it. That's all that we need to do. And then we can do all this other stuff in the background. Okay, so now that's what I want to do to actually reduce the memory footprint of this uh, of this application. This is really what you should do every time you implement a UI image picker controller. Um, you should always scale the image down and then push everything to the background thread. Uh, just, just best practices. So in order to do that in Swift, um, we're going to first create a, a constant called priority. And we're going to set this to dispatch Q Q U E U E underscore priority and it's going to be default. So dispatch queue uh, priority default. Okay, and now we can use uh, Grand Central Dispatch um, to actually push everything to the background thread. So we type dispatch underscore async. Okay, so this first one queue and block. So the queue that we want to push it to, we're going to say dispatch underscore get underscore global queue okay the identifier is going to be the priority that we just set up and the flags are going to be zero okay and now the block is where we're going to put all of the code for the background thread so this is this is what's going to be pushed to the background thread now if we want to push something to the main thread we're going to say dispatch underscore uh, async it's exactly the same thing but now inside here the queue that we want is going to be the main queue so dispatch underscore uh, get main queue right here okay so now this brings everything to the forefront okay so now what we want done inside the main thread we put inside here all right so once we come in once we come into this uh, this dispatch here, the first thing that we should do is do the resize of the image for the new image, which is these two lines here. So we can copy and paste this right up here. So that's the first thing that we do when we enter into this background thread. Oops. Where am I at? Okay. So that's the first thing that we do when we enter into this background thread. Now we want to immediately, right after we resize that image, set the thumbnail image okay and I'm getting an error here because we're pushing this to the background thread we have to be explicit and say self dot scaled image with image okay so again what I was saying was now we dispatch to the main queue and now we can set the temporary image which is actually the thumbnail image so we can say self dot photo thumb or actually it's going to be the UI image view photo preview dot image equals the new image so we can set the image just like we did down here. Um, not sure where we did it, um, but we, but we set the image here, um, and then what we can do is say self dot dismiss. Actually, it's going to be picker dot dismiss view controller true. and nil okay so we dispatch that to the main thread so set the thumbnail image and then immediately dismiss that view controller so then everything else after that is going to be on the background thread but will already be returned to that main uh, view controller which is the enter your wave view controller so everything else uh, so here's that we set the new image so everything else that we did here can be in the background so we can take all of this stuff here copy that and put it into this background thread here Okay, and then just delete this picker dot dismiss view controller. Okay. So this is everything else that we do. We 
resizing the data, getting the URLs, putting it into the documents directory. This is all going to be done in the background, and we're already going to be returned to the main thread at this point. All right, I hope that makes sense. Now, the only reason we get errors here is just because we need to add self dot scaled image with image. Um, there we go. So that should be everything. So let me just reemphasize what we did here. So we got the image picker controller. This is being returned right after the user selects an image or takes a photo. We get the original image. Then we dispatch to the background thread. We scale the image and create this new image. And then the first thing that we do is dispatch to the main thread, set the thumbnail, and then dismiss that view controller. So we actually get back to that, uh, the screen with the preview and the user can enter the weight and say submit or save the weight then everything else is going to be done on the background thread okay so this is all being done as you're already returned to uh, the first view controller all right so this will certainly increase performance and this is what you should do every time you implement a UI image picker controller scale the image and use background threads and main threads here all right so again let's just test it out just make sure everything's running right I'm gonna load this up let's see so log your weight uh, we can enter in 123 We'll go to this, all photos, we'll select the dog. So now we're returned back, everything's fine. And like I was saying, the processing is being done right now um, since we're already returned here. Save your weight, here's the dog, click it, full screen image, everything's working fine. All right, so that was how you create a custom uh, table view cell and just add a little bit extra performance for the UI image picker controller. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Uh, feel free to leave a comment below, uh, any questions and concerns. And please uh, like and share this video. Uh, it really helps me out. Uh, thank you guys a lot. I'll see you in the next one.